Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together an ultra budget gaming PC. With this one, you can actually get out for around $190 to $230 depending on what kind of parts you pick up. A lot of the stuff that I got was used from eBay except for the GPU and this one's definitely a bit different from some of the other ones that I did because for the GPU, we're actually using the Intel Arc A380. So I recently did a review on this, but we put it in a much more powerful rig so we didn't have any kind of bottleneck for the A380. And since then, I had a lot of people ask me to use this in a budget build with one of these Optiplexes, an HP, or a Lenovo. So here it is. We're going to see how this thing performs. But before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple of years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone. And basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So for the base of the build, I'm using an Optiplex 9020 that I got on eBay. This doesn't have a power supply, but it does have an Intel i7 4790. I can also recommend the 4770. We've also got 8 gigabytes of RAM running in dual channel and a 500 gigabyte Western Digital mechanical drive. I'm only going to be using this to install some Steam games too. I will be adding an SSD so we can speed up the boot times and just have a much quicker operating system in this machine. I got this machine for $62 shipped on eBay. And if we head over there right now, a lot of them have been posted. 4790, and like I mentioned, the 4790 is what I recommend. But if you can't get that, the 4077 is also pretty decent. This one comes with 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte mechanical drive. You want to add an SSD for your operating system, 119. Moving down a bit. Now I got a pretty decent deal on the one that I got because it didn't have a power supply. 32 gigabytes of RAM with this one. But yeah, they're here. If you search around, you can find them for really cheap. I've seen them as low as $45 ship with the 4770. Now since the Optiplex that I picked up didn't have a power supply, I'm going to add one. I'm also going to be adding some more RAM and a 2.5 inch SSD just to speed up boot times. I'm going to be running Windows from that drive. I picked up a used EVGA 600 watt power supply on eBay for 20 bucks. Uh, it's definitely overkill for what we have, but for these Optiplexes, you'll also need an adapter. These are about $6. The Optiplex uses a proprietary connector, and this will allow us to connect any ATX power supply to this PC. Another thing I always recommend with these used PCs is repasting the CPU. I use this Noctua thermal paste. But now I want to add a little more RAM. And this did come with 8 gigs. I haven't even checked it. Yeah, two 4 gig sticks. What I've got is another 4 gig stick and one 8 gig stick, bringing the total up to 20 gigs. And the only reason I'm using this is because I bought it a few weeks ago for another project that kind of fell through. It was only about 15 bucks shipped, and you can probably find it cheaper. You might even have some laying around if you've built a couple PCs in the past. Now it's time to add the power supply, and the one I'm going to be using is definitely overkill. It's a 600 watt EVGA, got it used. Uh, lots of unnecessary cables here for this build, but we can kind of tuck them away. And we're also going to need an adapter for the 9020, because it doesn't have a 24 pin uh, connector on the motherboard here. So we'll use that Dell to ATX power supply uh, adapter. I'll leave links for everything in the description. And we're also going to need an 8 pin PCIe connector for the ARC A380 does require extra power, and we've got it here on this EVGA PSU. One of the main things that's going to hold a build like this back in 2023 is the CPU. I've got basically a maxed out 9020 here with that uh, 4790, 4 cores, 8 threads, up to 4 gigahertz, and of course when it was released it was top of the line, but now with games out like Cyberpunk 2077, I'm pretty sure we'd be able to take advantage of all 4 cores and 8 threads, basically max this 4790 right out. 
With this power supply, we've got a lot of extra unnecessary wiring for a build like this, but we can tuck it right in that uh, drive bay up top, actually clean it up really nicely. But the next thing I need to do here is actually add the GPU. And for this, we're going to be using the Intel Arc A380. I recently did a video on this. We put it in a much more powerful system just to alleviate any kind of bottlenecks. And it's not a bad 1080p card. You can pick these up new for $99. And I've also seen them for around $70 used on eBay. But now we've got everything put together. I've also installed a 240 gigabyte SSD right there above the uh, mechanical drive. That's what I'm going to be running Windows 11 from. Overall, not too bad. Wiring cleaned up pretty nicely. Now it's time to see how this thing performs, because personally, I'm not exactly sure how well it's going to do with that older 4th gen i7 CPU, but let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm going to be running Windows 11 Pro. Okay, so I've got Windows installed. I've updated everything. Real quick, I want to show you from performance. With this card, performance tuning and the arc tuning utility, we can actually take the wattage up to 66 watts. I'm not going to be overclocking or undervolting or anything like that. Basically, I'm just up in that power limit so we can keep those clocks for a longer period of time. I'll tell you right now, I've already noticed that that CPU is definitely a bottleneck for the A380. A380 isn't the most powerful ARC card on the market, but uh, the 4790 is just getting a bit dated. So when it comes to the newer AAA stuff, I did run into a few issues, but I've got a few games here that I want to show you running. And the first one, one of my favorites, OG Skyrim. Going into this, I was pretty sure we'd be able to run this at high 1080p. Every once in a while, uh, the frames do drop a bit, and you'll see right here, basically not during, you know, real gameplay, but just every once in a while you'll get that. If I didn't have the frame counter on, I wouldn't really notice it. And if you take a look at our GPU usage, it does get up to around 88%. CPU isn't that bad here with this older game, but as soon as I moved over to Forza Horizon 5, you can see that that i7-4790 is pegged out. So we're using all four cores here, and we do have that boost clock up to 4 GHz on the 4790, but it would definitely help out if we had a little more CPU. We're only at about 80% utilization on the GPU, 1080p medium, but we are over 60. I had a feeling Doom Eternal was going to run well. 1080p medium settings, not bad at all. We had an average of 81 FPS with this. Uh, I could definitely play through this just fine on this little machine. But uh, again, you can see our CPU is pegged out, and now at 1080 medium, the A380 is also pegged out at 99%. It's still holding its own. I mean, it's doing a great job here. I could play through this whole game on this little setup, no problem at all. But of course, I had to test out Cyberpunk 2077. Low settings, 1080p, and I did turn VSync on because it seems when it starts overrunning, it does dip down even further. We can't quite get a lock at 60, and I'm sure if I went through and went to, you know, real all low settings, we could. But unfortunately, it's really coming down to that CPU. And finally, we've got Starfield. I knew going into this, we were not going to get good performance. Uh, this game doesn't perform well on most machines that I've tested it with. And we're in a city. We're in Jemison right now. Some of the harder places to play through. We are at 1080p, but FSR is as far as we can take it, so we're at 50% resolution scale, low settings, and we got an average of 18 FPS in the city. Out in the open, on a planet, about 38, and indoors, it can hit 60 FPS. Overall, not a bad little setup. Of course, there are more powerful machines out there, and when it comes down to it, the 4th gen i7s are definitely getting dated. With something like the new Forza Horizon, when you boot it up, it'll tell you that your CPU isn't supported. You can definitely continue anyway, but we've only got 4 cores and 8 threads there, which is really kind of lacking with all of these new AAA games on the market. I personally think that a better GPU option for something like this would still be the uh, GTX 1650 or even the 1660. We're still going to be limited by that CPU, but, you know, we've got really great driver support, and it doesn't require PCIe 4.0, which is also kind of killing our performance here on the A380. But it's still possible to game on a machine like this at the time of making this video, and if you're interested in putting something like this together, I'll leave links to everything I used in the description. 
If you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.